Likewise, the Prime Minister acknowledged the work of the media in the most challenging moments of the pandemic, during which they stood to the role of public servants committed to the truth. The Cuban Council of Ministers approved the setting up the new Department of Attention to Religious Institutions and Fraternal Associations. According to the official website of the Cuban Communist Party, the new department will lead and implement administrative tasks related to those institutions. The information adds that the existing Central Committee Office of the Attention to Religious Affairs will keep operative on implementing the revolution's policy regarding religion and believers. Master in Sciences, Eloisa Valdez Perez, who has a long record as a Communist Party leader, will lead the new department. For years, Valdez has been an official with the Central Committee Office for the Attention to Religious Affairs. The new department is in tune with the ideas, concepts, and guidelines of the 8th Congress of the Communist Party of Cuba regarding improving management methods of the organization and the policy related to religious and fraternal affairs. Vietnamese Defense Minister General Phan Van Giang and Cuban Ambassador to the Asian country Orlando Hernandez Guillén we have turned the world to continue developing cooperation between the two nations in the military field. General Young thanks Cuba for the donation of 150,000 doses of Abdallah vaccine against COVID-19 and for sending doctors to face the disease and express his wishes for the friendship with, between both armies. Fernando Guillén recalled that this friendship was forced in times of the war against U.S. and assured that if then the Cubans expressed to Fidel their willingness to give even their blood for Vietnam, today they are willing to save lives with their vaccines and the technologies to produce them. The two parties celebrated the successful fulfillment of the collaboration program between the Ministries of Defense and the Revolutionary Armed Forces and other related documents. The Panamanian government modified a previous regulation and established a new provision accepting certain Cuban citizens or crew members in transit from the need of a transit visa. The new decree number 20 modifies Articles 1 and 2 of the previous provision in force since March 8 of this year. Thus, according to new decree, Cuban citizens traveling to the island are accepted from the requirement of obtaining visas for passengers or crew members in transit. The exception also includes citizens who have a valid residency or multiple visas valid for no less than six months at the time of transit, duly granted by the United States and Canada. It also includes citizens with valid residency or multiple visas issued by Australia, the Republic of Korea, Japan, the United Kingdom, Singapore, and any of the member states of the European Union. The rest of the passengers with Cuban passports who required a stopover in the Republic of Panama will be subject to the visa for passengers or crew members in transit, the new decree specifies. The previous provision, number 19, in its Articles 1 and 2, demanded the requirement of a transit visa for all Cuban passengers or crew members in transit to Panama, with a validity of three months, and only authorized the person to remain 24 hours in the international transit area of the all the air terminal in order to continue their trip to another destination. Over many decades, Cuba has extensively and continuously contributed to the international community, particularly through its remarkable supply of medical assistance to countries in need.